Hello everyone, um, my name's uh, Steadyman, I'm the author of the PCW emulator for MISTA. Uh, this is just a quick overview video of the new features that have been added to the PCW core since the last release. Uh, so first up uh, we have a configuration of the model of the Amstrad PCW. Um, there are two different types of PCW. Some have one disk checksum and some have a completely different checksum. So the 9256512 plus and I believe the PCW10 use a different boot disk. So if for example you tried to boot one of these disks like the master disk um, in the 8256 mode, um, you have to put the disk in a reset, you'll see it just beeps three times and, and then fails. Uh, so you need to configure it to that mode. Uh, and then if you reset again, hopefully you should then get that 9512 uh, disk booting. So you see this is a later version of CPM. Uh, you can also speed the core up to 32 times. Uh, which is a good idea now that the um, one of the other issues that we had was disk corruption could occur. That's now completely solved. Should be no issues of disk corruption any longer. Uh, another quick demonstration. One of the features there is a, a RAM test function. Uh, you can see that it's detected there's 250k memory. So if I let that perform the test, and this is all operating at eight times the original speed. That's all passed, everything's gone fine. So what I shall do now uh, is expand the memory all the way up to two meg. Um, so that's the, one of the other new features. And reset the system. See so boots a lot quicker. And again, if we run the RAM test, you'll see it now sees the full 2048 megabytes of memory. The RAM test takes a little bit longer to run. So this new RAM expansion does require uh, external SD RAM support on the MISTER. Um, wasn't possible to get any more than 256k by using the shared memory that's uh, present on the FPGA. Okay, so hopefully that'll finish soon. There you go, that finished, everything's fine. So if you reset that again. You'll see one of the other new features we've now got is the capability to have more than one drive. So we've now got a drive B as well. Um, in 9512 mode, both of these drives are seen as three and a half inch 720k discs. Um, so you may get some fun is trying to read low density discs. I have done some little hacks in the core um, to try and allow it to reload density disks and it does work most of the time so for example if we put the lagger in to drive B you'll see it's actually accessing it that wouldn't work in a, a 9512 plus normally um, and that should Boot. Oh, maybe not. No, nope, maybe not. Maybe it's got some copy protection on it. So in that case, we jump back to that mode. Um, pick. <coughs> excuse me. Pick the original blogger uh, blogger boot disk. And reset. I think the black is actually checking that um, it's in drive A, so we'll mount that into drive A. That should then start it fine. So it's a little bit quick. Uh, I will show quickly one of the 
things I saw somebody doing a YouTube video uh, with like this. Let's just slow the code down to the proper speed there. Um, which is the joystick support. So I'll just grab a gamepad. Uh, if you start Blagger by pressing the space bar, uh, you might find it just jumps left like that. That actually happens on all the emulators too, and it's down to it incorrectly recognising the joystick. You actually need to use a Cascade joystick for Blagger to work, so if you set it to Cascade then it will work as you expect. Not very good at Blagger though. Uh, so, some of the other features that we've got there then, um, I've just added the CPC page in mode, which wasn't supported in the first release. Um, that actually was the cause of some of the games not working. Uh, so, for example, it over heals. Um, had a corrupt boot screen before. Uh, that surprisingly was down to this problem. So if I up the speed again and then reset, head over heels should correctly load now with the right boot screen. There you go. So it's no longer corrupted. And I can show you another new feature here. <clears throat> so, like some of the emulators, I've also added uh, basically CGA color support. So, but it's a little bit more configurable on this core. So, if we enable that, you can pick different palettes, and they are correspond to v uh, CGA color palettes. Um, you actually, need to press F11 to turn it on once it's enabled. For the game and I'll, I'll explain why in a minute so if we were to oh it's all right enter to select apologies if the sign's a bit loud so you can you can see there that's got the color emulation and um, it will that setting via f11 will turn off between each boot and the reason for that is you can kind of configure it for different games differently and I'll explain why that's handy. Um, so for example if we went to let's hang on it's a good a good adventure game we could try um, say Night Oak for example. Toggle it on there, for example, and off again. So, Nighthawk's graphic adventure, um, but quite a lot of these games are the, the graphics are kind of ported across from things like the CPC, which runs at half the resolution but has four colours. Uh, normally, in Emil, if you turn this on, as I'll do here, obviously, I'm not sure how clear that is, but the text then suffers because. It was always designed to be displayed at high res, um, but whereas now it's running at half the pixel resolution, you see false color. So what I've done in the core is you actually can change uh, how much of the screen runs in fake color mode, uh, and that's controlled via the F9 and F10 keys. So F10 moves the simulation down, F9 run, moves it up. So for example, if we press F9 now, you can basically turn off the that mode for the text which is fantastic for graphic games like this um you know so not quite sure how to play this game but obviously it's not um not going to change the graphics uh, and that, again you can toggle that on and off full screen or you can move the point uh, where it's available from 
Uh, so let's just turn that off quickly. Uh, so one of the other big differences as well, we've massively, I've massively improved the mouse um, handling. So if we boot something like the PCW Paint program, uh, which I've got in extras, so boot CPM. And again, I have to put this in drive A. There is actually copy protection on PCW Paint that looks on drive A, so you can't, can't run this on drive B. Um, Oh, so piece of paint. Uh, this supports multiple mice modes. I think I'm in Kempston at the moment, so you can see now it's quite smooth and responsive. You can draw curves. You know, I could uh, accurately erase things because the mouse moves smoothly. Um, let me just check. So the only other thing there that's fixed is the, like I say, the disk corruption issues. Those should be completely gone. So if you do see an issue with disk corruption now, uh, then please log an issue. Just a quick look at the different color mods that we've got um, as well. So if we boot Ingrid. Which is another one of the, I think it's a level 9 adventure. All really good. Okay, so obviously we can turn it on full screen, which is not very nice, or we can configure that point there that the color mode comes in at and um, it also does um, still work with the phosphor color selection you, st you still do that for the, the high risk portion and then we've got what most people probably recognize as the standard cga palette there uh, you can turn off fake color we've got a nice dark palette which does suit some games or bright palette which probably suits this game pretty well. Um, I'll just quickly show one of the other new features. So if we boot local script, um, go in here, oh that's not the right one. Yeah. So we should be able to boot local script one. You can see these are three and a half inch drive. Now we're in this mode and sees the full two meg of RAM. Oh, I do actually need to put a disk in the second one as well, otherwise it it will complain. So let's put the examples in. Dislikes flashing away at the moment. So it's just uh, loading up. This does. It's quite a big program. Probably most people recognise this in uh, green screen as well. That's it. Uh, so what I've also done now is before the sh the function keys F1 and F2 used to map to the same key, and F. 3 and F4 used to map to the same key set, same with the rest of them. And on a real PCW, you actually need to press Shift, for example, to get F2. So this is the program that most people probably recognize uh, of their first experience of an Amstrad PCW. Um, in the previous release, you had to press uh, F1 um, Shifted. Um, or F so basically F1 and F2 were the same key, F3 and F4 were the same key, and so on and so on. Um, if you hold down shift with F3 or F4, you get the F4 menu option. Um, now what I've done is you actually 
can just press F4 and it will press the shift for you so it's more intuitive when using these programs uh, if you press F1 it just presses F1 uh, you can also use the arrow keys here to go across the disk so for example that's the B drive we could open up newsletter press E and press enter for some reason local script needs the enter on the numeric keypad not the enter on the main keyboard I assume that's the same on the original machine and there you can see and edit your documents this reminds me a little bit of WordPerfect with uh, display codes enabled um, Obviously this is running a bit faster than uh, an old machine, so scrolling's a bit quicker. Okay, I think that's all of the uh, new features. Um, thank you for watching.